All right, you guys knew it would come to this. It is Bon Jovi time. So this is an excellent lesson in dyads and kind of like modes in a drone thing. So first we're gonna learn how to play this classic, classic song, Dead or Alive. And uh, it's actually really easy to play conceptually once you think of it as shapes, right? We're just gonna have two shapes. Basically, uh, shape number one is gonna be where your middle finger is on the G string. We're gonna start on the 14th fret. And your pointer finger is on the high E string on the 13th fret. So if you think this is a shape, this is we have middle finger on the G string, pointer finger on the high E string, and they're one, your pointer finger is one fret back, right? So if this is shape one, we're gonna hit the D string open, the G string, the E string, and the G string, right? And then now we're gonna go to the second shape. It's only two shapes. We're gonna go right here, which now the D string is open, my middle finger is on the 12th fret of the G string, and my ring finger is on the 12th fret of the E string. So now my middle finger and my ring finger are in line. So we're gonna call this shape two, and we're gonna think of rooting these shapes on a note. So basically 14, fret 14, shape one is gonna look like this. Fret 12, shape two, looks like this. Now we're gonna go fret 10, shape two. Fret nine, shape one. Fret five, shape two. Fret four, shape one. Fret two, shape one. Okay, so again, it's 14, one, 12, two, 10, two, nine, one, five, two, four, one, two. I think I just said that right, okay? So that's like a good way to kind of remember just how the shapes move. But what I wanna talk about are the notes that are contained in the shapes and the concept of dyads, right? So a dyad is just a two note chord. Usually we talk about triads, like a major or minor chord is a three note chord, like D minor for instance is a D, an F, and an A. And it doesn't matter how many Ds you have, how many Fs you have, how many As you have, as long as those three notes are present, it's a triad. Any major or minor chord is a triad, right? So now if we start by kind of analyzing this first three note thing we have, right? We have an open D, the 14th fret on the G string, which is an A, and the 13th fret on the high E string, which is an F. So we have a D, an A, and an F, which I know I was just talking about dyads, but those are three different notes. Those three combined would make a triad D minor. So you might think that we're in the key of D minor because a lot of times the first chord that you hear will kind of tell you what key you're in. But we're gonna talk about that in a second because we're actually not in D minor. And this is an example of having one single note droning. That D note is playing a huge important role because it's establishing the tonal center of this song. So we're thinking of a D note the whole time and we're adding a dyad, a two note, chord or a two note thing, uh, chord, a chord technically has to be three notes. So we're adding two notes on top of that drone, which again is just an F and an A. Now the reason that that can't be a major minor chord, just an F and A, because we can interpret that different ways. We can think of that as having the first and the major third of an F, of a F major chord, an F and A, or we can think of that as having uh, the minor third and the fifth of a D minor chord, which would make more sense here because of this D note, the way it starts out. But the reason I'm thinking of this as a dyad uh, is because of where we're going next, right? So after this, we go to the, the shape two on the 12th fret, and we have a G and an E, right? So technically we'd have a D, a G, and an E, and you know, that would still kind of fit in D minor, but a D and a G and an E don't really make like a major minor triad. But to kind of like continue the shape thing, you can think of a G and an E together as maybe like part of a C major chord. Maybe it's uh, part of like an E minor chord, right? The cool thing is uh, there's really no class of this chord. It's just in the, the context of a key and moving around, right? And especially something like this too, like another way to kind of look at this, and this is just the way that I'm looking at this. I'm not saying that Richie Sambora thought of this when he did it, but there's one thing that whether you like Bon Jovi or not, you can't deny that Richie Sambora really knew exactly what he was doing. It was kind of like a master of the guitar fretboard. So another thing that we can kind of quickly talk about is how these notes relate to each other, right? So we've got a G and an E. If we think of G's key, G, A, B, C, D, E, it would be a root and it's six. And something very bluesy is kind of using the concept of sixths and moving them around like. Something like that, right? So we're kind of combining a little bit of blues stuff. This, this riff doesn't sound bluesy. I think it sounds more like just pairs of notes. So again, 
We're just grabbing a G and an E. We're doing the same thing here on the 10th fret, but now we have an F and a D. And then we're coming back, we have an E and a C. That can be like a C major. Again, we're just droning all of this over the D and how these notes relate to a D. So if you've noticed, we haven't mentioned any sharps or flats yet. Basically all the notes we've used have just been A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, which uh, if you know your, your key signatures and stuff like that, means we're in the key of C. But when we're in the key of C, and this D note is taking the most influence over what we're doing, which is exactly what's happening. You can't really deny that that droning D is kind of like affecting how you perceive the other pairs of notes. That means we're in D's mode of the C major scale, which happens to be D Dorian. So I'm thinking of this as kind of like a D Dorian intro that we're kind of going through. Another way you can think of this is if you think of learning the fretboard and a great way to do this, and I can link you to uh, a video of like the series that I did on the modes and learning the modes as kind of like hand positions all throughout uh, one key. You can almost think of it him as choosing little pieces of scale positions, right? Like, uh, like for example, like maybe, maybe the second and third ones, the... If we think of being in the shape, the hand shape that the learning the modes of C major would be in, we would arrive on D Dorian, just like we talked about, and the Dorian shape looks like this. And then if you just take little pieces of this, you'll see that all of those are kind of hidden within that shape. So that's like a great way to kind of like use uh, scale shapes and positions all throughout the fretboard, droning over a single note to kind of establish its tonal center and then just taking that. So when I see something like this, what I'm thinking of, I'm thinking of him as moving through little pieces of what he kind of sees is like the total framework of moving scale positions and playing positions around. So again, you know, far be it for me to put myself in the mind of Richie Sambora, but I kind of think that is how he was thinking more of like, okay, I'm grabbing like a D, an F, and an A, and then I'm getting like a D, a G, and an E, and making like a G major six type chord. Sometimes, you know, chords are definitely the answer. Other times scales are the answer. But this is just a great example of how you can like take a tonal center and then kind of add two note chords, pieces of chords, pieces of scales, and kind of start connecting the dots together to make one fluid fretboard spanning riff or something like that, right? And uh, that just kind of even plays into the rest of the song. When he gets to that D major chord, it's so same. So great, right? I know every time that like I'm playing live or whatever, no matter where it is, I kind of try to sneak in just this part. And there's always one guy, I, without fail, you can try this anywhere you are. There's always one guy in the court or in the crowd that's like, right on man, Bon Jovi, yes. Without fail, at a wedding, at any kind of gig, if you play pieces of dead or alive, someone out there will appreciate it for you. So definitely just kind of maybe you know, experiment with uh, with your own playing. Use a drone, you can use a capo too, because if you play open, uh, there's only a few options of what notes you can drone. So if you have like a particular key that's like you're working in, you're trying to learn all the positions in, just start trying to like add little pieces of scales over a drone, and then you can kind of get like a modal kind of cool sounding thing, which this is a great example of. It kind of sounds like a D minor thing, but it's really not. And that's kind of like the beauty of like the Dorian mode and every kind of mode has its own feel to it that you can create by adding a tonal center and creating chords around that. So anyways, if you have any questions, hit me up on Twitter, Instagram, the website or the comments below. And until next time, I'll catch you then.